Well, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video out here in the mountains. Spring is finally on its way. The weatherman said that by noon today, there would not be a cloud in the sky and it would be 50 degrees. It's noon right now and it's starting to clear up a little bit, but there are still a ton of clouds. And as you can see, we even got a little dusting of snow last night. Not very much, hopefully it'll melt. Anyway, it's springtime, so the ice is melting off the lakes and hopefully the fishing is going to get really, really good. So I plan on heading up to this lake. It's a few miles away. I've parked my truck right here and I recently bought a new toy. Check it out. Bam, folks. Look at that. Brand new four-wheeler, Polaris Sportsman 570. I don't know much about four-wheelers, but for what I'm doing and what I plan on using it for, I feel like this is the best option that I had. It is used, it's got like 450 miles, and I got it for multiple reasons. One being this truck, my old faithful 1998 Chevy Silverado. I've had it for like four or five years now. It recently hit 300,000 miles. Pretty sad, I've had a lot of memories in this thing, a lot of good times. It's not completely dead yet. I mean, it still runs, obviously I drove it here, but every once in a while, it has trouble starting. In fact, let's see if it'll do it right now. Oh, started up this time. But every once in a while, it just won't turn over for a few minutes, and sometimes I'll have to wait one, two, three, four, five hours, and then it usually fires right up. So, just not the most reliable vehicle to be driving out in the middle of the mountains with no service. Anyway, long story short, this truck, it's, you know, clearly had some wear and tear over the years, and that is probably the main reason why I got this four-wheeler, just to kind of extend the life of my truck. But this isn't the last time I'm gonna take this sucker off-roading. But uh, it's an early retirement, you might say. But anyway, we're gonna get our stuff all rigged up. I'm gonna bring my fly rod, get this sucker unloaded, head up to the lake, and catch some fatties. Let's go. There we go. We made it, first trip in the four-wheeler is a success. And I know the top comment's gonna be, why weren't you wearing a helmet? I just haven't had a chance to get one yet. And I was just being extra careful this time. I don't mess around with that. So kids, always wear a helmet when you're riding four-wheelers or dirt bikes or anything like that. So I don't want any angry emails from parents. That water's high. That water is very high. Check this out. Beautiful little pond. There is still some ice on it over there on the far side, but for the most part, it's all opened up. All right, guys, so we're doing some fly fishing, obviously, and I got a new fly rod recently as well. So I got a new four-wheeler and a new fly rod. I got this from Aventuron. If you guys don't know what Aventuron is, it is an online store for all your outdoor necessities. They have tons of fly fishing equipment from different brands. They have Reddington, Temple Fork, and I think a couple others. They got nets, waders, boots, flies, all that type of stuff. And they have hiking equipment, camping equipment. See, so yeah, I got this combo. It's a Reddington Path, and it was only like 100 bucks. I think it was 99.99, so we're gonna try it out today. It's supposed to be pretty decent. You know, you don't need anything too expensive to catch fish. I'll leave a link to their website in the description as well as this rod. And just so you guys know, when you click that link and you buy something, it also helps support me. And every dollar goes back into making videos that I hope you guys enjoy. 
All right, so what are we gonna use? Well, some of you guys might know I opened a P.O. box a couple months ago, which I will also leave in the description. And a lot of you guys have sent me some packages and I really appreciate it. I brought two of them out here with me. First one is from Barbara Emmerich from Nampa, Idaho. I did already open this one and look inside. Pretty sweet, look at this. She tied all these flies. All these little bags are just full of flies. We got some leeches, black damsel, pheasant tail nymphs, paradigons, crappie jigs, pups midges. Like, she freaking killed it. Thank you so much. We're definitely gonna use some of these today. Next up we have a package from Steve Heverin. Not sure if that's how you pronounce your last name, but we've been emailing back and forth. I know there's some flies in here. Ooh, heck yeah. Check that out. Got a little box of flies. Look at that. Got a bunch of little, oh look at that. We got a little worm imitation right off the bat. Got some like grasshopper, dragonflies. Lots of dry flies it looks like. Heck yeah, dude. I know you guys probably can't see them well, but that is freaking awesome. Thank you so much. These will definitely come into play at some point this season. Some dry fly fishing for grayling or something like that. Heck yeah, I wrote a letter and told me how to use all these flies. Thank you so much, Steve. All right guys, here's the setup I got going. Starting off with this leech tied by Barbara. It's got some red, some gray, got a little red bead head on there. I'm gonna fish it under an indicator. I don't know how deep these fish are. This is a fairly deep pond. All right guys, that is gonna do it for this spot. The biggest problem is there's just nowhere to fish. There's too many branches and trees behind me. It's literally impossible to get a good cast out and the water is just super high. I'm gonna head to a different spot and see what we can get there. Here we are, spot number two. So this pond is super shallow, a lot shallower than that first when we were fishing. I mean, I can see the bottom clear out in the middle, so. There was a swipe. There was a swipe. That's the first fish I've seen all day. Heck yeah. Okay, there's fish down there, folks. There's fish down there. He just took a swipe at it. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Finally. Freaking finally. It's a little guy, but it is a little brook trout. I will take it on the green leech or the chartreuse leech whatever you want to call it itty bitty brook trout too small to eat well i mean we could eat them but wouldn't be a very big meal cool get him back there he goes i don't think that was the first one that swiped at it that first one looked a lot bigger and i felt it so there's probably more than one down there Got him, watched him, watched him. Number two, same spot, about the same size. Maybe a little bigger. Another little brook. Look at that, folks. Feels so good to be catching fish. Another one, yep, a little bit bigger. Honestly, we could probably eat this guy, but I'll toss him back, see if we can get anything bigger. Cause I do want to cook something out here, I'm hungry. Many hours later. There we go, there's a fish. There's a fish, I think it's an eater. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful brook. That's gonna be dinner for us. I'll just bring him up on the bank here. There we go, look at that folks. So I switched it up and I tied on a little black leech under an indicator and he crushed it, perfect size for the pan. And it's actually starting to get a little bit dark out here and cold so we're probably gonna cook this guy pretty soon i'll probably fish for at least a few more minutes and then we'll cook this guy that's cool all right folks well i'm gonna head out of here a little early it's just getting way too cold out here like i can see my breath 
and the wind's picking up so no use in trying to cook or start a fire i'll just take that fish home and cook it but this is not the end of the video i'll be back out here in a couple days to hopefully catch some more fish fishing just wasn't great today fish for like six hours caught three fish but yeah anyway see you guys in a couple days one week later start the morning off with some bacon and eggs and hot chocolate Get some water boiling and then I brought some hot chocolate mix out here that we're gonna mix up in my little canteen this is actually the first thing I've cooked on this new stove two burner because there's been a lot of situations where it would have been nice to have two burners going also it has this little wind guard right here so if it is breezy you know you can still cook Right, bacon is done. Man. All right. And look at all that grease. I'm actually gonna pour a little bit of that out. Just a little bit. Then we're gonna cook our eggs in that. And this water's hot enough, so we'll go ahead and Pour it in our canteen. Try not to spill it on ourselves. There we go. We'll give it a good shake. Let's go ahead and try a piece of bacon. Oh yeah. This is the cheapest bacon they had at the store. Every other pack of bacon was like freaking 10 or 12 bucks. Like, are you kidding me? So I had to go with the cheap stuff, super thin, a lot of grease, but gotta do what you gotta do. All right, eggs are done. I'm starting to think I should have brought more eggs. I do have one more, but that's for the catch and cook later today. Nothing better than bacon and eggs in the morning. Beautiful morning out here. And it's actually supposed to rain a little bit later today. Or there's a 30% chance of rain. Right now there's not a cloud in the sky. So who knows? There's almost no point in checking the weather anymore. I'm gonna finish this up. I got my four wheeler, we're gonna unload that and then head up to a lake. Hopefully it's open. I don't even know if it's open. And hopefully we'll catch some fish. Brook trout, maybe some tiger trout. And just have a fun day out here. We got all day. Should be fun. All right, folks, here we are. This is actually the same pond we were fishing a few days ago earlier in the video. We caught a few fish, but it wasn't great. I'm pretty confident that we're gonna catch some fish. It is about noon right now. And I'm getting really hungry, so we need some fish for lunch. I'm gonna stick with my spinning rod and I got a little white leech that I'm gonna throw around and we might switch back to the fly rod a little bit later, we'll see. All right, so last time I was here, there were fish sitting right up on the bank right there. So I'm gonna toss this over, let it sink. Hopefully something comes out for it. Oh, yep, there's a couple fish. There's a couple fish. Oh, oh, oh. Got him. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Well, there was the first bite of the day. Let's see if I'll come back for it. I can still see him. I just saw one sitting right in the sand, casted right over to him. He came right over and I saw it disappear in his mouth and I set the hook, but popped right out. Oh, got him. Oh my gosh. Another one. Oh, he's coming to it. He's coming to it. He's coming to it. Oh, he's right here in front of me. Let's see if he eats it. 
Oh, he can see me. All right, folks. Well, at this point, my camera just decided to completely shut off. I lost like 10 minutes of footage, so pretty upset about that. But I ended up catching this fish, and I kept it, threw it on a stringer, and then I caught another one, brought him to the bank, kept him as well. And at that point, my camera just decided to turn back on, and I didn't have any problems for the rest of the day. But, uh, yeah, I got to get a new camera. There we go. That's about the average size fish in here. Actually, a lot of them are smaller, and there's a few nicer ones, but this is a nice fish. And that's the little leech I got them on. It's a little bit bigger than that white one, so I could cast it farther. And, uh, yeah, he seemed to want it. It's a nice fish. So what I'm doing, uh, or a lot of these fish are just sitting on the bottom. This isn't a very deep pond, like I said. It's only a few feet out in the middle. So a lot of times you can just sight fish these fish. You can see them, cast right to them. Or what I'm doing, since I can't really see out there, I'm just casting it out in the middle, letting it sink a few inches, and then just popping it back like this. And then every once in a while, you'll pass it by one of those fish and they'll just come out of the weeds and crush it. Oh, there was one. Right there. Got him. Oh, right there. I can see him. He's coming out from underneath these bushes. Come on. Oh my gosh, there he was again. Got him. Got him. Fourth time. <laughs> there we go. Bring him right over here. Sweet. Look at that. What is that, number three of the day? Cool, good looking fish. These are, so far these have all been pretty healthy fish. And we'll let this guy go. I do already have two. Maybe we'll keep a third one, but we'll just let this guy go. See ya. Oh, I got a fish. I got a fish. I didn't even, Realized I had one. I was trying to get untangled from the branch and uh, I just lifted up. And he was on <laughs> Smaller one smallest one so far still beautiful on that green leech There he goes now we're starting to catch some fish I'm feeling good. There's another one dude Very next cast. Oh, he just popped off another little guy right there. Oh, got him. He crushed it, dude. Oh my gosh, he just took my line. Almost took the rod out of my hand. Here we go. I think that's number five. Feels so good to be catching brook trout open water again. Been a long, cold winter. There's a fish hiding right under that grass. There he is. Oh, yep, there he goes. Came right out from underneath that giant grass mat. Crushed it. <laughs> so fun, these fish are so predictable. Just cast under any, or next to any grass mat, and you'll have at least one come out and chase you. All right, that's a nice one. That might be the nicest one of the day, actually. Oh yeah, for sure. Look at that, that is a, this is definitely on the bigger side of the fish in here. Beautiful colors, clean fins. Perfect fish right there. Oh, oh, there was one right when it hit the water and I didn't even know. Man. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I saw him. I casted right next to the grass like almost on shore. I didn't see this fish, but he was there. There we go. Nice. That's a pretty one. It's got a little bit darker colors. Cool, I'll just get them back quick. This feels so nice to be catching all these fish. All right, I'm gonna have to toss them a little bit because I don't want them to get trapped in all this grass. It's pretty thick, so give them a little toss. 
there he goes. He's good. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a giant patch of seaweed. And I'm gonna cast right on the other side of it. And I bet you anything one will come out. Well, guess not. Oh, yep, right there. Right there, I knew it. I knew it. Right there. Come here, bud. There we go, that's kind of a gray looking one. Doesn't really have any color to him at all. Interesting. Yeah, he's like bright silver. Again, we'll just have to give him a toss. There he goes. Oh, oh, yes. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, I just took this guy on the side. I watched him come out from underneath the bank and eat it, but must have set the hook right in his fin. Oh, and look at that one. This is probably the prettiest one so far. Look at that. It feels like he's got something in his stomach. In fact, that definitely feels interesting. It almost feels like there's a bunch of gravel. It'd be interesting to cut him open and see what he's been eating, but we'll just let him go. Oh my gosh! I was reeling in to recast and a fish just blew up on it. <laughs> on the surface. That was like a bass blowing up on a frog. Yep, got him. Right out there. I think the quicker I move it, the more aggressive they are. They want it moving. Quick. Uh, I wish I had some boots or waders that I could just walk out in this grass. I don't even know how many fish we've caught at this point. I've lost track. If I had to guess, like eight or nine. But this is a very different story than the other day. See ya. Oh, got him. Came out from under a log over there. Get over here. Come on. There we go. You know what, folks? I think we're gonna keep this one. There are so many fish in this pond, as you can clearly tell. I've only been here for an hour and I've caught almost a dozen. And a lot of them are small, skinny. So we're gonna take a few of them out. And hopefully that leaves more food for the rest of them to grow bigger. A lot of times with brook trout, they can overpopulate in ponds and get really, really stunted. So taking your limit home is sometimes a good thing. Look at that. Three beautiful brook trout. We're gonna fillet them and fry them up. And I wanna catch some more fish first. There's one right on shore. Let me get him right here. Turn around. There he is. Come on. Oh, come on. He's getting right up to it. He's just not quite sure. Oh, that was a big one. I just missed a big one. He had it in his mouth and he spit it right when I set the hook. There he is. There he is. Another one. I think we've caught like a dozen fish today. That is pretty good if you ask me. There he goes. He shot right out of there. I almost want to take a break and cook because I am seriously hungry. Actually, let's get a time check. 2.30. Yeah, we haven't eaten in like six hours. So uh, I'm starting to feel it. But it's just so hard to stop when the fishing's this good. Got him. Got him. <laughs> hey, get out of the grass. Get out of the grass. Ooh, oh, oh. There he goes. Catch and release. I'm going to count it. Oh, there's a fish. Thought I was hung up on some weeds. 
This is so much fun. <laughs> All right, folks, it is long past lunchtime. I am starving, so we're gonna go ahead and fillet up our three little brook trout right there on this tree stump that I found that is gonna be our filleting board. So we got our brook trout fillets right there, looking good. I was gonna just break out my propane stove and cook them that way, but I'm looking through my bag and I brought the propane, but I don't have the stove. So I'm gonna have to make a little fire out here because I don't think I have my stove. I don't need a big fire. I just need a little cooking fire. Just need to fry up some fish. First thing we'll do is pour some oil in. That's good. And while that gets heated up, I'm gonna take an egg, crack it in a bag. And I got here some McCormick Golden Dipped Cajun Seafood Fry Mix. I was at the store looking for some fish fry. And I saw this and I thought, well, let's give it a try. Ooh, it's even got red tint to it. I think this is supposed to be pretty spicy. It smells good. It does, oh yeah, for sure. Yep, that's gonna be spicy. Let's take our brook trout fillets. I'm actually gonna cut them in half, smaller chunks. This will be like little bite-sized fish nuggets. Drop them in the egg. All right, mix those up. Drop them in the Cajun batter. And I think on the back of the box, it actually says that you don't even need to mix the fillets with egg. It should just stick to them. But I just want to wash them through some egg anyway. Hopefully get a lot of the batter to stick to it so it'll be even crunchier. All right. I always blow some air into the bag. It's just easier for them to all get coated. All right, I think the oil is hot enough. Oh yeah, for sure. Probably only do about half of them. Oh my gosh, I can smell those already. Yeah, we might be able to fit them all in actually. Maybe. It's gonna be a tight fit, but we might be able to make it work. All right, look at that. We got them all in there. It's the smell in the air right now is very powerful. I think they're already ready to be flipped. Oh yeah. They've been in there for about three minutes and they're already ready to be flipped. All right, they are done, definitely done. Let's set them on our plate, let them cool off. There we go. Fresh fried brook trout, Cajun style. Oh man, I'm excited. Like I said, I wish I brought like a lemon or a lime, but I always forget. Never fails. Let's give it a try. That looks pretty good. Whew. Oh man, that is very good. That breading is very good. I will say, not super crispy. 
not very crispy at all. I don't know why. I know if you set the fillets in the oil too early when the oil is not hot enough, then they can kind of get soggy. But that oil was plenty hot. So I don't know. Is this even supposed to be crispy? I don't know. Doesn't say, but it's good. The flavor is very, very good. Really spicy too. Now it's hitting me. Mmm. There's nothing better than cooking fresh fish right after you caught them, right where you caught them, over a little fire. Just fry them up in some oil. Which, by the way, if any of you are wondering what I do with the oil after I'm done cooking, I have like an empty water bottle or something like this, and I wait for the oil to cool down, and then I just pour it in a bottle, pack it out, throw it away. Because you don't want to be dumping your oil just anywhere. I definitely recommend giving this a try. It's, uh, it's a little spicy, not too bad, but the flavor is really, really good. And I'm sure it would taste even better with like catfish or walleye or perch, which hopefully I'll be catching some very soon. But obviously, delicious on trout. Give it a try. Last bite of fish. That was very good. I'm just thinking how much better it would have been with a lemon. Alright guys, so for the last hour or so before we leave, because there actually is a storm rolling in. You guys can't see it, but there's some dark clouds right there. And it might start raining here quick. So I want to catch a few more fish before that happens. And I got here a black mamba, black mamba, tied by Barbara. We're going to see if we can get some more on the fly rod and of course it's starting to rain right after I said it here comes the rain I'm not even kidding oh there he was there he was I don't know how they avoid the hook so well as I see it disappear in their mouth all right well it's starting to hail now Come on, we just gotta get one more fish. Hey, as long as it's not windy, I'm fine just fishing in the rain. There we go. There he is. There he is, and that is a nice fish. That might be the biggest one. That might be the biggest. Oh, for sure, for sure. That's a toad. I mean, it's, it's a nice fish. Not a bad fish. Look at that, on the fly, tied by a subscriber. Look at that. That is, for this pond, this is a very nice fish. I love it. In the rain, I'm about to head out of here. I'll probably give it a few more casts, but there we go. Got him. Watched him come up and take it on the black mamba. It's crazy how fast the weather can change. Five minutes ago it was hailing and snowing and raining. And now it's perfect. There we go, dude. I We have caught so many fish today, I can't even keep track. All the fish we've caught today have been, for the most part, pretty healthy. Not a lot of small, skinny ones. They've all been about like this. And here comes the rain again. <laughs> Literally, if you don't like the weather, give it 10 minutes and it's gonna do something different. Oh, two of them came out for it. Two of them. There he is. There he is. Another one following him. Another one following him. Bring him up here. There we go. Another pretty one. Sweet. Just pop that hook out. Oh. And there he goes. Now I want to see if I can get his buddy. Because uh, he was chasing him. And he seemed like he wanted it too. Uh-oh, I can hear some thunder. <sighs> Dang it, we might have to get out of here pretty quick. 
Come on. One more. One more. There we go. Yep, there he is. There's his buddy. I knew it. <laughs> this will probably be the last one before the storm chases us off. Oh, he's hung up in the grass. Oh, come on. Get out. Get out of there. There we go. There we go. Got him. I would have hated to have just broken him off in the grass. Well, this is probably going to be the last fish of the day because that thunder is getting closer. And I think it's about to just storm, so we better get out of here. But beautiful fish. What a good day this turned out to be. There he goes. Well, folks, I think it's about time we head out of here. The wind's picking up, and that does not look good. And I can hear thunder, so we're going to get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a great way to open the season. It's been such a long, cold winter that it just feels so good to get out here and catch brook trout open water on the fly rod, too. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget, if you want to send me something, I will leave my P.O. box in the description below. And maybe I'll use some flies or lures that you guys send me. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.